Were you in Adam's balls in the Garden of Eden? That's what we're going to find out today. You see, a few days ago, I posted a video discussing how the idea of inherited guilt from Adam is not biblical, and none of us were in the Garden, so we couldn't sin there. And somebody raised a question about Hebrews 7, 9 through 10, because in that verse, we're told that Levi himself paid tithes to Melchizedek because Levi was in the loins of his ancestor Abraham when Abraham paid the tithes. So the idea here is if Levi was said to do something through Abraham, despite Levi not existing, can that same thing be said for Adam and us and inherited guilt? So that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's start with Hebrews 7, 9 through 10. What's going on there? In the ancient world, they did not have our understanding of human reproduction. They had the idea that a man deposited a human into a woman and then it grew within her. This is why the language for a man's semen is usually referred to as a seed. Just as one plants a seed, and it grows. The man plants his seed in the woman and it grows. So there was this idea of you kind of existing in your father's loins before you were born. Gross, I know. This is a scientifically untenable position in light of what we know regarding modern genetics. Your body did not exist in your father. You are the result of two separate sets of genes coming together, at least your body is. So there are several positions you could take regarding this passage. First, you could affirm that you really did pre-exist your birth in some way. Church tradition has typically condemned this view, but there technically is nothing scriptural which uh, prohibits it. However, even if you want to affirm that your soul pre-existed your body, to make this work on a literal level, you would have to affirm that your pre-existing soul was contained in your parents' balls and in their parents' balls and so on and so forth. So it doesn't seem like a great option. Second, you could maintain that this verse in Hebrews reflects that the author had that pre-scientific belief of a man depositing a seed that we just discussed and that he was incorporating that belief into his theology and was just therefore mistaken. A lot of people would not want to affirm this type of um, mistake in the Bible, so I'll pass on this one, although honestly that doesn't bother me too much. Or third, and this is the position I take, you could maintain that the author of Hebrews knew this idea existed in his audience or his culture and he made a passing reference to this idea as an illustration of his overarching point. The fact that this phrase is prefaced by the author saying, one might almost say, which was a common literary phrase to break off one's train of thought and not deal with it more fully, suggests to me that this is what is occurring. The author of Hebrews doesn't commit himself to us literally existing in Abraham's balls or our parents' balls. He just says that one might almost say that. This is all in the context of explaining how the Levitical priesthood was inferior to the priesthood of Melchizedek. Uh, the Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek, and Abraham was greater than the Levites. He was the one to whom the promise came. Abraham was the one to whom the prom uh, promise came. So one might almost say that the Levites paid the tithes because they were in his loins. But this is not literally true. With all this in mind, it's difficult to see how this is supposed to support the idea of inherited guilt from Adam. People who want to harp on verse 9 of this passage of Hebrews and say, oh look, federal headship, the people are said to have done something by virtue of their ancestor. They often conveniently ignore the fact that immediately after that, it says that all this is because they were in Abraham's loins. What is said in verse 9 is explained by verse 10. And unless you think verse 10 is literally true, that argument just doesn't seem to work. Second, even if you think verse 10 is literally true, that does not get you inherited guilt. Even if you think we all, ex all existed in the balls of our ancestors, that doesn't entail you inherit the guilt of all their sins or that you are said to have done every action that they have been said to do. Do you think you are guilty of everything your grandfather did or your great-grandfather did? And probably not. So in conclusion, this verse just simply has nothing to do with the fall of Adam. Adam. And apart from some strained and selective exegesis, there is no way to incorporate whatever idea is expressed in this text to support the idea that we are all guilty because of what Adam did. Rather, this is the author of Hebrews drawing on ideas in his culture to express an idea which does doesn't mean that the author explicitly affirms them. This is not the only place we see in scripture the author expressing an idea or an argument through the use of pre-scientific thinking common to their day.